Hello everyone. Welcome to the module on the nervous system. In this module, we will talk about a very important and highly tested topics of nervous system that is hematomas and hemorrhages. Okay? Now starting with the first hematoma that is epidural hematoma, it is primarily caused because of the rupture of middle meningeal artery. Okay? So this is very important rupture of middle meningeal artery which is a branch of maxillary artery. Am I clear? Now, epidural hematoma can often be presented secondary to skull fracture, okay? And at specific positions like the terion, which is the thinnest area of the lateral skull or the temporal bone of the skull. Is this clear? Now, if there is a fracture on the terion, it can lead to epidural hematoma. Am I clear? Now, they might be present with transient loss of consciousness and they can be recovery with lucid intervals. Now, whenever there is a rapid deterioration, it is due to expansion of the hematoma. Am I clear? Now, epidural hematoma is also a scalp hematoma and there is a rapid intracranial expansion under systemic atrial pressure. So, whenever there is excessive pressure, the hematoma expands in the scalp and there is transtentorial herniation with cranial nerve 3 palsy. That means there is oculomotor palsy. Is this clear? I'll talk more about transtentorial herniation separately in a herniation module. But for now, just remember that epidural hematoma are usually associated with cranial nerve 3 palsy and transtentorial herniation. Now, on the CT scan, it is seen as a biconvex, lentiform, hyperdense blood collection. Okay, so this is a biconvex, lentiform, hyperdense blood collection not crossing the suture lines. Is this clear? Now, in this diagram, we can see the terion. This part is the terion where there is skull fracture can lead to epidural hematoma. Am I clear? Now, talking about the next topic that is the subdural hematoma. Subdural hematoma is majorly due to rupture of the bridging veins. Okay, so the veins that bridge different parts of the brain is ruptured and there is a subdural hematoma. Now, it can be in two types that is acute or chronic. Now, acute causes of subdural hematoma is usually traumatic. That, that means whenever there is a high energy impact on the brain or on the skull, there is hyperdense finding on the CT. Is this clear? Now, this hyperdense finding is due to subdural hematoma. Now, it can also be chronic due to mild trauma, cerebral atrophy, elderly or alcoholism. So, remember that there are various multiple chronic causes which include mild trauma, cerebral atrophy, aging, alcoholism which leads to presence of hypodensity on the CT scan. Whenever there is acute, it is hyperdense. If it is chronic, it is hypodense. Remember that. Am I clear? Now, subdural hematoma has a classic association with shaken babies. That means infants who are shaken or are exposed to trauma, even on a mild level, can present with subdural hematoma. Now, the predisposing factors include brain atrophy and trauma, whereas the presentation is usually a crescent-shaped hemorrhage. You can look at this, a crescent moon-shaped hemorrhage. Epidural hematoma showed a biconvex, subdural hematoma shows a crescent shape hemorrhage. Is this clear? Now, these crescent shape hemorrhages crosses the sutures line. Okay? And these can cause a midline shift leading to various type of complications of hemorrhage. Am I clear? So, there is primarily a midline shift. This is the midline. And there is a slight shift as you can notice. Is this clear? So this is all about epidural hematoma and subdural hematoma. Now talking about hemorrhages, the first one is the subarachnoid hemorrhage. Now hemorrhage basically means bleeding 
and whenever there is a bleeding due to trauma or rupture of an aneurysm okay such as saccular aneurysm or av malformations it can lead to subarachnoid hemorrhage am i clear now there is a rapid time of course and the patients usually complain the worst headache of their life so whenever there is a excessive headache complained by the patient subarachnoid hemorrhage is usually sus suspected is this clear now the, there is whenever a person with subarachnoid hemorrhage comes for lumbar puncture there is a yellow fluid found okay now this yellow fluid is due to xanthochromic substances present in the lumbar puncture uh, in the cerebrospinal fluid which is which is seen in spinal tap or lumbar puncture am i clear so subarachnoid hemorrhage is basically due to rupture of a aneurysm or av malformation and presence with the worst headache of his life so please remember this now whenever there is vasospasm which can lead to the breakdown of the blood or it can again lead to rebleed in 3 to 10 days after hemorrhage they can be ischemic infarct okay so vasospasm can occur due to break, blood breakdown or rebleeding in 3 to 10 days and which can eventually lead to ischemic infarct now remember that nimodipin okay nimodipin is used to prevent or reduce the chances of vasospasm is this clear now a classic association of subarachnoid hemorrhage is again with communicating or obstructive hydrocephalus that means there is an increased risk of developing communicating or obstructive hydrocephalus due to subarachnoid hemorrhage is this clear so this is all about subarachnoid hemorrhage coming to the last part of this module that is intra parenchymal hemorrhage or intracerebral hemorrhage now let me tell you that intracerebral hemorrhage is due to systemic hypertension now whenever there is excessive blood pressure in the arteries it can lead to excessive blood pressure in the brain which can lead to various type of injuries now intraparenchymal hemorrhage means the cerebr cerebral matter is exposed to ischemia which can lead to hemorrhage am i clear or it can lead to it can be caused from excessive blood pressure now these are also seen with amyloid angiopathy and vasculitis or neoplasms so multiple causes lead to intraparenchymal hemorrhages now it is primarily due to systemic hypertension but it can also occur because of reperfusion injury in a ischemic stroke that means if there is ischemia it can further lead to intraparenchymal hemorrhage due to reperfusion injury am i clear now talking about hypertensive hemorrhages that is charcot bouchard microaneurysms now these are usually little lenticular striated vessels which are present here okay can you see in the diagram now when these parts are blocked there is infarct or ischemia or hemorrhage in the brain and hence these are hypertensive hemorrhages which are due to breakdown of these microaneurysms is this clear now this is usually seen in the basal ganglia that means the putamen of the basal ganglia followed by thalamus pons and cerebellum am i clear so these are the major types of hematomas and hemorrhages which are usually given or tested in your exams so please read this and also with that please check out the various ct scans i have shown over here on the right hand side am i clear Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button and do subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comment section below which topics do you want me to explain. Thank you.